Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming out. I'm Bob Odekirk. I'm the mayor of Joliet. I want to welcome you all to our great city. Thank you for coming, supporting the project that we have going here. I do want to thank the Joliet Historical Museum, Greg Pierbolt, and Quinn Adamowski for spearheading this. It's been an ongoing effort to get this prison rehabilitated and back functioning again, and you're all playing a part in it. So again, thank you for coming out and supporting this great event we're doing tonight. Uh, we're going to kick things off with some local musicians from the Joliet area. Al Spears in the Hurricane Project. Let's have a great night, everyone. Welcome to Joliet. Thank you. This was John and Danny, the original Blues Brothers here at this prison. It's a massive, massive place. Uh, it feels good because, you know, we're bringing some love, music, enlightenment, and joy to this spot that, you know, harbored a lot of pain and sorrow and humanity. So it's nice to bring that energy back and repurpose this place and bring great joy and music to well, Julia. What do you think John would say? Oh, I, I can't speak for him. I can't speak for him. I can't speak for him, so I don't know. It's okay. Yeah, go ahead. Nice okay. Show. So what are you guys going to sing tonight? Well, we're going to do all the Blues Brothers, Stand of the Ring. And Dini's going to do Rubber Biscuits, Sweet Home in Chicago. we got a special guest coming up for Soul Man. we got Bones Malone from the original band here playing trombone. He made great arrangements for all the Blues Brothers songs. Uh, and we're going to be kicking. we got some sound. We're going to have this place filled. And uh, we're going to play it all, baby. Play it all. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, I never, I get caught with that all the time. That's like, okay. what would John say? I have no idea. <laughs> that's okay. That's a valid. Response. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. I but it's good people. to see you. Oh, thank you. Thanks for coming yeah. out and supporting us. Yeah, it's so great that you stepped in and. Yeah, actually, if you want to, if you can put this on. Uh, <laughs> and tomorrow night, the Blues Brothers are going to be in Niles, Michigan. We got another outdoor event. It is going to be the first time that there's actual cannabis consumption licensed on the grounds. I mean, come on, everybody's been doing it, fish concerts and Grateful Dead concerts for the last 30 years, but this time it's legal. So we're going to be excited about playing there, too. Thank you so much. Thanks, Niles, man. Yeah, I'd love if you get that plug in. Doctor, Julia Patch. Oh, hey, how are you? Thanks can you just talk a little bit uh, about uh, just what it means to be in Joliet? To sure, the, uh, sure. Uh, Did you get Danny already? Danny, he's, he's, he went on a golf cart and he's coming back in like 10 minutes. Oh, okay. You yeah, he just, sit up here and do it? Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Did, you, did, did you get Danny? No, not yet. Okay, he'll be coming back. back. He'll be coming back. Yeah. What was this request? You want to do it with the man? No idea. Do you want to do it with the prison now? Walls for background? Or do you want to do it on camera? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, go. Yeah, right here. Yeah, yeah. Can we go off for the press? Yeah, sure. Do you have your interview? I gave it to the guy. Which guy? Andy? The second guy. But you gave this guy with the box. Ready to go? So are you two separate? Yeah. Okay. We can all do it together, though. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Five minutes. Sure. We have five minutes here once the music gets wrapped up, guys, so it's kind of fire Q&A. I think that's the best option here. Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, and Danny, they're Danny, all here. Danny will come and help me. Can you talk, Jim, just about what it's like to be in Joliet after all these years, after the impact that this movie had on the world? 
Well, it, it's wonderful to be in Joliet. I mean, it's it's a thriving city now. It's uh, actually I have a, a, a board of comedy improv group who played that the most beautiful theater we've ever played. And, uh, the Real about right right here, mm -hmm. Joliet. So uh, you know, it's ingenious that Greg came up with this idea of repurposing the Joliet prison. I mean, this place harbored you know lots of sorrow, hurts, and resentment. You know, it's just it's hard in humanity to be in prison or to even think about incarceration, especially those incarcerated for, you know, non-violent cannabis crimes, which are still 40,000 incarcerated men and women for non-violent cannabis crimes right now. So we are personally a part of the last prisoners project, and we are trying to get them out of these kinds of places. So, hey, excuse me. Excuse me. Yes, I'm going here. Are you excited about tonight? Though to be on stage when we're going to have three to five thousand people easily in in this uh, arena. Well, look, it's always exciting to be dancing with Danny Aykroyd. <laughs> I mean, come on, this guy's like six four, wonderful, beautiful, kind, funny Canadian, and he is just a joy to be with on stage. Every time we do the Blues Brothers, it is so wonderful to be with them. And the band, you see what we got? We got four horns, we got two guitars, B3 organ, backup singers, we got harmonica players. Hold on a second. Bones, you want to come through? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll see you later, Z. Okay. And he'll obviously be up on the stage with you, too. Bones Malone. It's the backbone of that blues brother. His arrangements, the horn arrangements, were so magnificent. I mean, Sweet Home Chicago, they played at Wrigley Field at a win. And that horn arrangement is like four minutes long. It is rocking. So to have Bones Morrow back on stage with us today is awesome. So you've been through Joliet a few times, even though you haven't been, you weren't here obviously for the movie because you weren't in it. No, we did Red Heat. We did uh, Arnold and I did Red Heat at Statesville. Oh, okay. Uh, so. It's still operating. Right? It's still operating. I know I almost pulled in today, you know. I, was like, oh, I see a lot of cars here, you know. Are you serious? <laughs> You got any new songs Can you guys just step over? I'm just trying to do some press here and the chatter. Be my Thanks, guys. Would it be cool? Thank you so much. Any new songs lately? Any new songs lately? We're going to do a new song tonight. Larry Joe Campbell's going to sing one of his Motown specials. A uh, very funny song. Uh, we're going to be filming a Blues Brothers documentary. And we're going to be filming for Growing Belushi, the third season um, for Discovery. Uh, we're going to be doing some scenes and some footage of the show. So it's show biz, it's music biz, it's fun biz. We're, we're going to have a great time tonight. You going to do any footage inside? Yes. Danny and I are going to be shooting some stuff inside, absolutely. Nice. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Uh, what are you going to be doing inside? You know? Uh, we're going to be uh, shooting two scenes with me and Danny in the, the green room cell uh, discussing, uh, you know, the plight of the band, the plight of cannabis in America, uh, because the Discovery Show going blue, she's about uh, the growing and the recreation the aspect of cannabis. Here's a question. Do you have a favorite strain? I do, yeah. I have one in Oregon that I grow called Cherry Pie. Yeah, because it's very, I'm a lightweight, and it's very low THC and very high in turkey values. So there's an entourage effect that's like just chills you. And I swear when I do one little hit, I can listen to my wife all night. <laughs> and she sounds smart and beautiful. So I call it the marriage counselor. I want some of that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I told that story in Oregon. It sold out in six weeks. Because women were coming and going, where's that marriage counselor? <laughs> he needs it. 
bring some for tomorrow night. <laughs> well, you can't transfer over state <laughs> money, so no. On their joint. Uh, uh, personally, uh, I think the phone is about getting blasted. I'm not for getting blasted. Cannabis is medicine. I think you should microdose for, you know, socially, for concerts. Um, I, I'm simply with like alcohol. It's like, you know, beer or two, a glass of wine. But once you get past that, you're over medicating. But in cannabis, you can over medicate and fall asleep on the couch. You know, uh, it's non violent. I mean, I was a. I was a bouncer in Chicago, and I never broke up a fight between two potheads. So alcohol use can be, uh, you really have to be responsible. Cannabis, you know, it's gentle, sweet. Thanks for saying that. <laughs> light, you know, brings the light in, brings the light in. Hey Jim, is this the first time you've seen this place, or have you seen it before? This is my first time. It's where you're impressed. Well, I just rolled right up the sound check, so. Quite impressive. Uh, but you know, you just can't help understand. This is like a fun celebration here, you know. We're reinventing, we're re energizing, we're bringing life to these grounds that were rough on people. So, uh, you know, I'm not anti jail or prison, but I'm just. It's just a sadness. So we're going to shake that sadness away. And we're going to bring the light with the Blues Brothers. All set? Thanks, guys. Patrick, you want to go up here and get a drop? Yeah. Here comes Danny. Hold on one second. Okay, okay. We're in the middle of it. Just step away. I just saw him. Where did he go? Right there. Okay, you want to bring him here, yeah, sir? We should get a photo of you, you guys together if it's possible. How's the, how's the battery going? Yeah, since us though. Can we take you over there to the car real quick? Yeah, if you want uh, media, uh, should be up in that corner. Okay, we'll get media over there. Pastor Jim, yeah. Okay, cool, man. I got you. Would you like a drink? No, thank you. Okay. Is that a rhetorical Yes. I'd like to do this radio job real quick before okay. these interviews. All right. Is that okay? Is that, is that okay? Yeah. 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 Tell Danny what you So something easy to the effect of, hey, you're listening to the best in blues with my friend Mighty Quinn on Buddy Guy Radio, okay? You guys want to add anything else? Blues, brother, however you want to do it, freelance it, have fun with it, man. Roll. Three, two, one. You know, the best of blues is played right here on Buddy Guide Radio. One, one more. Take as much time as you want. Yeah. You know, the best of blues is played right here on Buddy Guy Radio with your host, Mighty Quinn. Don't you agree, Brother Z? I think the best of blues is with Mighty Quinn, of course, Brother Hollywood. When we are in Joliet or in the Chicagoland area, we listen to Buddy Guy Radio. I'm Elvin. Thank you. Doesn't it tell you that we love you today? <laughs> well, I, can I just get one I, quick I, shot with I, you I before anybody this. goes crazy? I love this. This is great. Anybody? Anybody? Please and thank you. My man. My man. Danny, thank you so much, brother. God bless you. Jimmy, you. thanks, brother. Thank Chris Barnes says he loves you. All right. Thanks, guys. I'm out of the way. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. NBC. I was going to ask you a couple questions. You can sit in on this if you want. Just a couple questions. We already got you. Okay, good. All right. You good, Dante? Okay. So, 
42 years ago, he made this movie, and people are still into it. What do you think it is about that movie? Can you, it, it's not out over there. <laughs> no doubt it's the music, it's the songs, it's the, the great writers that wrote those songs. Uh, and also just the power of the music and uh, the power of the, the stars that were in the movie, Ray and Aretha, and, uh, and uh, in the second one we had uh, Eddie Floyd, and, and uh, we had, you know, a great lineup of, of, of fantastic talent that uh, just is, you know, transcends all cultures and transcends all borders. So I think the power is in the music, the power is in the songs, and uh, and the quality of the mus musicians that we, we had. And it's a fun story, and it, it, it reveres the city of Chicago, reveres African-American culture. And, um, you know, it was needed at the time, and kind of we need it again here now, I think. We, we need fun music, food, and laughter, and blues uh, right here now more than ever. So uh, to come back here and bring it full, full circle, it's, it's very, it's, I'm humbled, I'm grateful really grateful. How does it feel to be back here at the prison? I remember some of it. Um, I'm surprised uh, that uh, so much of it is still in damaged shape, uh, but uh, with uh, the advent of film and television coming here, uh, there are facilities on the property here that will work well as sound stages and uh, a lot of uh, several decommissioned prisons throughout North America now fun function as that. So I'm hoping that uh, someday when I come back, there'll be executive offices for a production company up in there. <laughs> I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. And also, where does this fit in to your career? Like, is this the highlight of your career? Was this one of the highlights? Well, I guess it was the favorite movie for me to make because we get we got to write we got to act we got to record we got to sing we got to dance we got to drive stunt cars we got to work with ray aretha and james brown who became a, a great friend of mine and so i would say it's the, the movie that i most enjoyed making and as far as career i it it occupies a third of my time now we still play uh jimmy and i have an active schedule brother z the blood brother of uh of Jake Blues, who I found in, in Albania as an infant and brought over and trained him. That's the, that's the myth. And so uh, we, uh, yeah. And so we uh, we have uh, we have an active concert schedule, and uh, we've played uh, all over uh, the Northeast this summer. And uh, here we've got more coming up. So as long I have 80 percent of the moves left, I think. As long as I can keep uh, you know dancing, moving, and singing, uh, I, I guess I'm going to do it. It just, just brings everybody so much joy, and uh, it's the one and a half hour in my life that I don't have to think about anything but delivering the show. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank nice to talk to you. Can you, can you mention the Niles one? Uh, sure. We have a concert. Yes, we have a concert coming up in Niles, Michigan tomorrow night, 6.30 at the Riverfront Park. Um, and um, it's a, it's a, that's be a very special, a special event because it's a little earlier, so um, hopefully young people will be able to come. Uh, I always love these shows when I see and I look out and I see young people, young musicians, young uh, artists uh, who have picked up guitar, harmonica, drums, and uh, if we bring that to the world, well, our mission is complete. And I've met a lot of people throughout the years that said they've picked up music from listening to the Blues Brothers, and and so, in, in a way, uh, that, that's, that vindicates it all for us. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Thank it's you. It's good to meet you. Thank you very much. You guys mind if I get a quick pick? What's your pick? Yeah. Get in there quick. Let's go. All right. Um, and then we got uh, Patch here, Jonathan Patch. Dan. Right. 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 right here. Right here, guys. Ready? Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Go, guys. Thank you. Um, okay, we have the Herald. We have Herald. We have the Herald trip, and we have. Were you John Derek, Julia Patch. Oh, Julia. Yeah. Thanks for your time. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, I mean, Bruce Brothers is that's my pen. Yeah, I'm good. We'll just do this as a video. I mean, I'll just audio. Good. Okay. Um, Blues Brothers is obviously 40 some, 40, 41, 42 years now. 42. Yeah, um, we, I think we counted from our first appearance on SNL is when we counted from. Mm. But it, it was older than that because we brought it to the show as a, a kind of a already refined act. We played with uh, Willie Nelson at the Lone Star Cafe for a few nights and jammed with Duke Robillard, Room Full of Blues. So we were perfecting the act and bringing it into SNL. So the first time the world saw us, though, was, was on, the, on the SNL show. 
What about, though, just for the people in Joliet? Obviously, movies have incredible, enormous impact worldwide. Um, but just for the people that will be here tonight, the Joliet residents, uh, is there any special message that Dan Aykroyd has for them? Uh, well, thank you for the welcome that it uh, looks like we're going to re be receiving. Uh, so I am very grateful for the welcome. And for just the, the, the everyone's countenance seems so happy and up. And God knows we need that in the world today. Um, I We'll see what the reaction is to the music. I think it's going to be all right. Um, so I say thank you to the community for letting us come here and film in the first place. And thanks for having us back. And for all the volunteers that have come out uh, on this uh, steamy evening to, to be part of this and to help out. And uh, the uh, police department and uh, public services that have really swung on board. We got the Mount Prospect uh, police car over there, the original one from, uh, well, uh, one like the movie, and then their their new unit and the guys from Mount Prospect, and they've embraced that as part of the legend, you know, and it, that's gratifying to see as well. Um, I hope that this uh, points the way towards film production coming here to Joliet, specifically to this facility. There's lots of room for offices, for warehouses, for parking. Um, and uh, it's perfectly set up. I uh, live part-time in a penitentiary town in uh, Kingston, Ontario, Canada, and the old military prison that's been uh, decommissioned there and, and uh, the uh, provincial or, or the federal prison now is uh, an active film set. So very good uh, this site is for the uh, for, for that industry and for the for the community. I think a lot of uh, commerce is going to come here through it. And I think the fact that five years ago, this place was constantly having arson fires, break-ins, vandalism all over the place, and to see what it's like now. Uh, it's got well, to I see, as I say, I, I, I look at those top windows, I see they're still abandoned, but I'm hoping that they'll be the executive offices of a big production company up there, <laughs> you know? And I'll be looking down in the yard shooting something. Thank I'd you love to come back. Thank you. I, thank you very much. As I mentioned this is your first time back since the, uh, since the movie, or am I wrong? Uh, well, I... I drive across country quite a bit. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not really a, an enthusiastic uh, flyer, although I, I like aviation and the technology, but I don't like to fly too much. So I've driven across country several times, and uh, I have come by the prison of, uh, when it was still operating, and then after uh, they closed it, uh, just to drive by the walls, you know, as in a reminiscent way. So yes, I have been back, but I never came inside until now. And it is perfect for a concert. Are you kidding me? What? Yeah, yeah, well, not only Blues Brothers. Look at look at the. You, you could have the Eagles here, and you'd have you could have two thousand people, three thousand more. It's great, great. It's it's great for films, great for concerts, public events, um, anything, commercials, videos, television. Uh, it's ready. And it's so cinematic. It's a magnificent example of, I guess it's Indiana sandstone, a magnificent example of penitentiary architecture. Like, uh, they don't build them like this anymore. Yeah, I think the prisoners built it. Oh, uh, is that right? Yeah. I think so. Uh huh. Well, yes. So, um, any, any, uh, were you, when you filmed the movie here, were you here very long or was it quick? Or? About a, it was about a week at okay. Joliet. Yeah, about a week uh, off and on with what John had to do with the extras being the film outside, you know, filming outside the walls, picking them up, coming in, doing the days inside. We had a scene where he goes to a brothel next door. We never used it in the movie, but we did film it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, any any anecdotes from those, that week here that uh, you could share? Do you remember anything special happened? Um, the enthusiasm uh, of the inmates when John uh, was walking down, uh, the, walking down the... Uh, the, the galley there, uh, the gallery. Uh, they were they were pretty vocal and uh, excited that we were we're here. And I, I think they had to be told to be quiet, which was hard. To, um, but maybe we gave them a little joy that day and a little hope. Not sure where all of them went, but um, I hope some are still with us and I hope some have turned their lives around. It's, it was a tough place, Joliet. There's no doubt about it. And uh, there's a lot of uh, heavy karma here. But hopefully, uh, with, when the sounds ring out. Tom Malone, we got with us, original Blues Brother. Steve Cropper, I think, will be able to uh, purge some of that energy and uh, and bring the place to a more positive uh, a positive stance. You know. You know, Calumet City resident asked me to ask you this: Why did you choose Calumet City as the home of the Blues Brothers? Well, because it's a Catholic city. Okay. Uh, and also, it was visually uh, uh, exciting for all of the abandoned technology and. Uh, and the look of the, you know, the look of the of the industrial part of it, and uh, it was just a 
a good, uh, good, honest place to, uh, you know, put the orphanage. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Very good. Can you tell me, when you were writing the show, the movie, was it based on any particular characters that you heard of in the past? Uh, it was based upon, well, uh, more or less, uh, the Elwood character was based upon a, partially a friend of mine from Ottawa, Canada. And, um, and the Jake character uh, was, you know, just based upon, I guess, the essence of the alpha Illinois male that John was. I meant to ask you, how, how did you pick the name Elwood? Are you familiar, you know the town just stuff, right? You know. Yeah, we know Elwood. We know Elwood from the, the movie Harvey, and we also know we Elwood. One uh, last question. Paul Schaefer and I named him, and because there was a host in Canada that we loved, a talk show host named Elwood Glover. Okay. And he had a show that took place in the basement of the Four Seasons Hotel on Jarvis Street. So that as he sat at his desk and he was interviewing guests, there was a window there above him. So you'd see the ankles and shins and calves of people walking back and forth. We always thought that was hilarious. And Elwood Glover was a kind of a funny character to us. So Schaefer and I chose that name. But you were familiar with the small towns itself. Right? Oh, yo, Elwood in Illinois, yeah. Okay, guys, thank you so thank much you. for your support. Thank you so much. Well, the significance of this event, I think, is it's just a part of Americana, the Blues Brothers. It's a classic movie, I mean, made in 1980, that people still today quote, that generations have gone by and they still love the movie. And to get the original, one of the original Blues Brothers here is, is absolutely incredible. And then the other one's brother, who's famous also. I mean, to actually get them back here, it is... It's a dream come true for everyone involved with this project. And don't forget Steve Crawford's here. Yeah, well, I mean, there's a whole list of them. I mean, there's a list of people that were here that have been impacted by this place. And I still can't believe, because when we were, you know, renovating and I, I worked on it a little bit. These guys, you know, the guys from the museum and the committee worked on it a thousand times more than I did. But the little time that I put in here, it was always, we got to get accurate. We got to get accurate. We got to get accurate. They got accurate. And they got Jim Belushi. I mean, it's, again, it's like mind blowing. Well, we're back again here at the prison, Collins Street Prison, the old prison, whatever you want to call it. We're here again for an unbelievable event. And you're going to be a part of it, though you didn't show up. We're going to share with you what's going on here today. And before he gets introduced and interviewed by a half a dozen more people, we were able to get uh, Steve Crocker. Now, I don't think he had that beard during the movie. Did you have that beard during the movie? I did, and I've had this beard since 1967. Okay. Was it the same color? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Great to have you. In the movie, it wasn't the same color either. <laughs> well, yeah, I bet it wasn't. It was darker. Is it darker? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, tell me about the, well, first of all, you're a great guitar player. And in Joliet, in Will County, we've got the Illinois Rock and Roll Museum. And we've met a lot of great guitarists, and you're one of them. You still play the guitar? I try from time to time. But I, I do say this, I don't want to ever have to spend a month here or longer than that. I don't even want to spend a night here, let alone a month. We have in the past talked to some of the prisoners, former prisoners and former wardens. And you're absolutely, positively correct. You would not want to spend a night here. I mean, we got bars right behind us here. I don't know what this was, but it was some place where you and I do not want to be. Right. The only bars I know are the ones that have alcohol. <laughs> you know, I've heard that they've got alcohol in some of those bars. <laughs> Tell me about don't the. Have any behind these bars? No. Uh, I don't know what that. They look like fire extinguishers. Um, how did they get a hold of you? Why did you get in that movie? Did you know somebody who knew somebody, or was it talent scouts well, out there? I, I think that Tom Malone had a little bit to do with it with Saturday Night Live. So when Belushi went to Tom, who was at that time the f director of the Horns, he said Steve Barnum wants us to open for him, do these shows. He doesn't want to use a, uh, a California band. He wants to use some band up here. He said, I've already told Steve, he was a writer for Saturday Night Live. So uh, that was the connection there, but he had the hit record King Tut at the time. So Belushi went to Tom and 
And he said, uh, do we take the whole band or what should we do? And Tom Malone, who's up on stage right now, said, uh, let's get Dunn and Cropper because they're old road dogs. I don't know where he got old road dogs. But we did two world tours with Tom and the guys during the summer. We did a record and did a summer tour and did another record and did a summer tour with Levon Helm from the band after the, after the last Walt movie. Well, before we go into some of your insights on the movie, what was it like uh, on tour back in those days? I mean, it sounds rigorous. It was a job like anything else, the tour was. But as far as making movies, we have all, I have always said, that's the most fun you can have with your pants on. <laughs> I stole that from C.C. Rodriguez. Did you? I did, I stole it from Chichi Rodriguez, who hit a big drive one day, and he turned, turned around to the, to the crowd and his fans, he said, that's the most fun you would have with your pants on. Well, it probably was. It probably was at the time. Now, Okay, you're on the movie. What's it like? Uh, I don't know. It's 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 good. It, it has its good side and its bad side. One is the good side is Duck looked at me. Duck Dunn, Donald Duck Dunn, the bass player, looked at me one time. He said, "I can do this the rest of my life." I said, "Me too." But the thing about movies is very simple. It's the best case of hurry up and wait I've ever seen. So you get make, go into makeup to do your close-ups. Doesn't happen for you know. It happens when they decide it's going to happen. And that's it. A lot of waiting around. A lot of waiting around. <laughs> he has his he has his people taking pictures of him, and someone's bringing a fender to us or something. I don't know what's going on there. What was your favorite scene? My favorite scene is the one I'm in. <laughs> the, I, I was I think my lines got cut from nine lines down to three. <laughs> and they worked. And they worked. So when Lou Marini says back at the Amada room. And he says, he looks up and he says, chicken wire. Well, that's kind of true. But Ackroyd switched it around. He made it fun rather than a negative. And so I can tell you the chicken wire, real truth about chicken wire. Guys that own the clubs, when a fight broke out on Saturday night, their, their equipment would get broken. The drums, the piano, the microphones, you know. So he put up chicken wire to protect his instruments. So in the movie, they said, oh, that's part of the fun here. So if you're real good, they throw their problems at you. Well, it had to be fun because it's been a few years since that movie and you've got a, every a memory. Somebody said 40 something, 40 years. I think it came out in 78, so that would be. They, what, what is this celebration? 44 years? Or, I don't know. Somebody told me a while ago and I forgot. You know, we're not math. We're not here to take our math test. The, uh, how were you contacted about this event? Judy Belushi called, called me, and that's all I know. And I didn't even know it was on until the day before we flew to flew out here, up here. So I've been to Chicago many times, but I've never been out to here to the Joliet person ever. Well, Joliet is mentioned in about 3,000 movies about, you know, you'll be sent up the river to Joliet. And now you're up the river, and now you're in Joliet, and now you're in the prison. What's it feel like? Well, I don't feel like I'm in prison, let's put it that way. I'm glad to be here doing interviews, I know that. We've got a lot of fans out there, so. You know, when we played, the, the, the original Blues Brothers band plays in Europe all the time. We don't play in the States unless it's a charity or something. We do, did a few of those. but uh, And then there's one coming up, I think, that with the whole original band, whoever's alive yet. Sometime, when is it? I don't know when it is, but it's coming up. Tom Bones, Malone was telling me about it yesterday, that he's got something going on. And uh, he didn't know about one that got canceled. So they, so Lou called me when everybody's availability, you know, because the guys, the band, because of the lockdowns and uh, yeah. falling out with uh, European promoters or whatever, everything has sort of been on hiatus. So he wanted to know everybody's availability, and I, I can't do it the first week of October. I think that's what it was, first week of October. And uh, somehow he said, uh, well, don't worry about it, it's been canceled, <laughs> okay. Steve Cocker is with us today, and we've had many interviews all day long, but I really enjoy this. Uh, we've got a lot of the VIPs coming in here, but I like to talk to the musicians and the guys who, well, they say are in the background. Well, these guys are not in the background. Have you ever heard these bands? They're phenomenal, and we've got a whole bunch of them for you to see here in just a moment. In fact, you might hear them tuning up in the background. You're, um, what, uh, are you a bass player? Guitar player. <laughs> No, I mean, do you play bass? No, I can, but I don't. Uh, no, I play guitar. How in the world are those guys who play bass guitar, doesn't that get boring? 
Uh, not according to Doug Dunn, no. good boy. <laughs> so I, I, a little trick that people don't know about Doug Dunn. He had very stiff fingernails. So when he he played upstrokes, but he hit his finger in his in his nail at the same time. Everybody thinks he's playing with a pick. No, he's not. <laughs> so everybody gets a pick and you know tries to imitate Doug Dunn by playing with a pick. Uh, he didn't play with a pick. Can't do it. Unbelievable. You with a cigarette right here. Oh my lie. gosh. Oh my gosh. I've never seen that. <laughs> And if you look at Duck's bases, it always has the burn at the top in the first fret. <laughs> has a burn there where he let the cigarette burn down about during a song. <laughs> you know, we're going to be on YouTube with this as well. If we go to YouTube, can we see any of those? Absolutely. You can see a lot of performances from the Blues Brothers Band and Booker T and the MGs and all that stuff, old movies. And So while we're talking about movies, yes. Watch the Blues Brothers movie, everybody will. Blues Brothers 1, Blues Brothers 2, but also watch Satisfaction with Liam Neeson, Julie Roberts, and Justine Bateman. I was in that one. That's the only movie I was ever in where I didn't play myself. I played Sam the Bartender. <laughs> Sam the Bartender. Yep. Well, we're going to get you some drinks, and we'll go look for Sam the Bartender. And we thank you for taking time out. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's right over there, I think, in what they call Maxwell Street. And I don't know if, you, if you've been to Chicago in the past years, there really was a Maxwell Street, a real Maxwell Street. Yeah. And we've got one just to the left of us here. The comedy, the Boar's Head Inn, I think. That was an actual place at one yep. time. Yep, it was. All right, Steve, thank you so much. Thank you, ben. Very much. Thank you for coming. You flew in from where? From Nashville. From Nashville? Yeah. You know, Nashville, Tennessee, probably the number four or fifth move-in city there is in the United States. More people are moving into Tennessee than any other state except Florida. So my wife said, it's great that you move here. Don't mess it up like you did California. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. That is true. <laughs> Thank you very much, and we're going to continue with our interviews in just a minute. Well, first of all, I want to thank you. Great. I love your welcome to Joliet speeches. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no thanks. It was um, this great event. Obviously, a lot of people who aren't from Joliet are here today, so it's important to you know put the face of the city on something like this. Because quite frankly, it was the city and the city council um, that, that that helped put this together with the Joliet Historical Museum uh, to get to where we are today. So I think it's important that people understand you know what exactly we're trying to do here. Some of the folks are who are. I, I agree with you. I think the majority of people right now are not from Joliet. They're from everywhere. And the message sent to them, both by you and others, is that this is not just for Joliet. This will be an iconic thing that will take for the entire state. Yeah, and that's what we're hoping. Certainly, we already see that with Route 66 and the out-of-towners out of that come through this area and, and are coming to the prison. I will say, though, i, I got to take a minute to thank all the people here that are volunteers, not just today, but for the last five years. Um, just tremendous effort has been put in by volunteers. And you see it every time we have an event, we see it downtown, but same thing here. There's hundreds of people that are here today volunteering their time to help make this happen. And many of them are Joliet people, so. Oh, yeah. yeah. The majority of those are Joliet people. You know, the one thing that I forgot to do at the very beginning, to introduce my good friend here. <laughs> this is the mayor of Joliet, Bob Odekirk. And uh, I'm going to go back to the very first event that was held here. Right. Remember that one? I do remember. Yeah, those the um, prison breakout, I think they called it. Yeah. It was about 20 degrees hotter than it is today. <laughs> a lot of sun, a lot of heat, and the breeze and the clouds going and the sun going in and out makes for a perfect afternoon and evening, and it's showing up because folks are coming from everywhere. In fact, I found out that in addition to the parking areas around here, there's, there's shuttle buses going to the city decks. Yeah, one of the issues, and there's been a lot of issues, but um, that we've overcome is trying to figure out how many people can we fit in here safely with you know ingress and egress and parking. And the parking's always been an issue, but um, I, I think we're doing fine by all accounts. We have done fine the past events, so I think we just keep raising the bar a little bit higher to see what we can do. Um, I know there's other entities that have talked about coming in here, putting on events like this, uh, maybe even bigger than this. So um, it's it's a work in progress. But again, everything seems to be going well tonight. It has in the past. So just yeah, we'll see what happens because uh, guys like Frank Markowitz from uh, F&M Entertainment, I know that he wants to get something going on in here as well from the Forge, Forge and Joliet, that is. And others have said, you know, they've been here for these events and they know how huge a crowd 
and the logistics here are phenomenal. Right. They are, and, and you know, Frank's one. You know, COVID did set this back. It's been five years, but we lost about two because of COVID. Um, so it's great to be back, back online, see a big event like this. I know there's more coming, but um, this would be a great annual event. I know the museum seems to think that there is enough interest that we could do this annually. I'm um, looking at the crowd and you know all the things that, that are. I like the Maxwell Street stuff that that, that came down. I love the, the the vintage cars. So it's it's been a lot of fun. I, I'm a little bit surprised to how much fun it's been. It's good. Yeah, and it has just begun. Thank you for your opening. Welcome to the folks here to, um, what's it called? Blues Brothers Con 2022. I'm Richard Fredrickson. Back to more music and entertainment. poison ivy, broken glass. There were four fires here in four years. And what do you think of what the job all the volunteers have done? Absolutely fantastic. The vision of this was the mayor of Joliet, Bob Oderkirk, Chris Regis from the city of Joliet. Let's give them a round of applause. And also from the prison committee, Greg Pierbolt from the museum and Quinn Adamowski. Let's hear it for Greg and Quinn. Two more people to thank, Congressman Bill Foster. He got $3 million for us. Let's hear it for the Congressman. And State Representative Larry Walsh Jr. got his $3.5 million. Thank you, Larry. Real quick, some sponsors tonight. Old National Bank, the presenting sponsor. North Point Development, Harris. Wow. Exxon Mobil, the City of Joliet. Mission Insurance, Enjoy Illinois. Darcy Buick, GMC. Elevate, Crystal Head Vodka, Darwin Furniture, First Secure Bank, and the Heritage Corridor. Let's hear it for our sponsors. Thank you. Tomorrow, you have a ticket tonight, you can come in tomorrow. Gospel music starts at 10.30, and tomorrow night at 8.30, they're going to show the Blues Brothers. So come on back tomorrow, you get in for free if you're in here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the Blues Brothers. Kind of a special treat for you tonight, Larry and Chris, Uncle Chris. Uh, we'd like to bring a very special um, guest to the, uh, the stage right now. He's a prominent uh, official here in our urban scape, and uh, we're, we're very pleased. We have a, a special moment in our evening, and I think all of us can relate to this. Sir, welcome. Elwood, thank you. I'm Fritz Kage, and I'm the Cook County Assessor. <laughs> now, I checked our files, and St. Helen of the Blessed Shroud is an orphanage. It's a religious institution. It's tax exempt. So we want to set this right. We're going to issue you St. Helen of the Blessed Shroud Orphanage with a certificate of error and make this right. No taxes for 1979 to 1981 and no taxes in the future. Thank you. I guess that means the movie never happened. Thanks, Fritz. You're a good sport to do this. I know you work hard. Everybody does. And Hey, let's have it for the city of Joliet for turning out tonight. Thank you. Thank you to all the police and fire and first responders and everybody that volunteered to make this happen. Hey, we're all together in this and I really feel your hearts tonight. I, I just thank you so much for coming. Our, sh our show will now continue. Thank you. Beautiful. Are you ready yet? I said, are you ready yet? Thank you. 